Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. In FLSM subnetting, all subnets are of equal size with an equal number of host IDs. In VLSM subnetting, different subnets can be of different sizes. This type of subnetting method is considered subnetting a subnet. VLSM subnetting makes more efficient use of given ID range. Today, I will demonstrate in detail how VLSM subnetting works. Let's look at this graphic. Route 1 is the gateway to LAN 1 with 25 hosts. Route 2 is the gateway to LAN 2 with 55 hosts. And Route 3 is the gateway to LAN 3 with 12 hosts. Three routers are connected to each other. Here is the question. The network consists of three local area networks, LAN 1, LAN 2, and LAN 3. These three lines are connected with three serial links, link A, link B, and link C, with an ID range 192.168.4.0/24. Please design an IP plan for the network using VLSM. I put the question in the video description below. You can go back to the question anytime during our discussion. Let's look at the given ID range 192.168.4.0/24. We don't care if a given ID belongs to class A, B, or C, as long as the given subnet mask is slash 24 insider value, we know we can use this sunny subnetting table. Keep in mind, CIDR stands for Classless Interdomain Routing. CIDR, some people pronounce of CIDR, while some people say CIDR. This reminds me a song, You like tomato, I like tomato, you say neither, I say neither. <laughs> the keyword Classless means forget about the classes A, B, or C. Whenever you say slash 24, such as 10.10.10.0/24 or 172.13.0.0/24, you can always use this sunny subnet table with the cider values from slash 24 to slash 32. Back to the question. In this network, we have six networks, line 1, line 2, line 3, link A, link B, and link C. Links A, B, C are also three separate networks, and each needs two host IDs. Thus, our task is to design an IP plan for each of these six networks, depending on their sizes. Thus, we use VL as a subnetting method. We need five steps to solve the problem. Step 1. Arrange the networks from the largest to the smallest. Thus, the largest one, LAN2 with 55 hosts. The next largest one, LAN1 with 25 hosts. The third largest one, LAN3 with 12 hosts. And the fourth largest one, or the smallest one, links A, B, and C. These three networks can be arranged together because they are of the same size. Each subnet needs two host IDs. Once they are in a descending order, we need next four more steps to complete our task. Step 2. Pick a subnet for the largest network to use. We start with LAN2 with 55 hosts. Let's look at the second row in the table. We are looking for the minimum number of hosts which can satisfy LAN2. That's right, 64 is what we need. We circle 64 and the whole column because all we need 
are these three numbers in this column, 4, 64, slash 26. 4 means 4 subnets, 64 means each subnet has a total number of host IDs, 64. Slash 26 is a new CIDR value. Now we will use these three numbers to build a new table with network ID, subnet mask insider value, host, the network. Let's fill in the columns of subnet mask and host first with slash 26 and 64. And these two numbers are directly from the column. In the host column, 64 is the total number of host IDs. Keep in mind, the first host ID is reserved for the network ID and the last host ID is reserved for the broadcast ID. The total number of usable host IDs for each subnet is 62. Now let's list a network ID for each subnet. The first network ID is always the original gaming ID, which is 192.168.4.0. The second network ID is 192.168.4.64. The first three octets remain the same, and the only the fourth octet changes. Thus, we only focus on the fourth octet. The third network ID is dot 128. The fourth network ID is dot 192. Here is the pattern. The first network ID is always the original one. The next network ID is obtained by adding 64 to its previous one. We can sign any of these four subnets to line 2 because they are all equal size. For the sake of simplicity, we assign first subnet to line 2. The other three subnets are marked unused at this point and they are for future use. We have completed the task to design an IP plan for the largest network line 2 and move to the next step, find a subnet for line 1 with 25 hosts. Step 3, pick the next largest network to work with. Step 3 repeats the process of step 2. First, a look at the second row in the sunny table. We are looking for the minimum number of hosts, which can satisfy line 1 with 25 hosts. That's right, 32 is what we need. We circle 32 and the whole column because all we need is this column. Let's look at the second table. We select first unused subnet and subdivide it into two smaller subnets. The new subnet mask is slash 27 insider and the total number of host IDs is 32 which can satisfy line 1 which only needs 25 host IDs. Dividing one subnet into smaller subnets is called subnetting a subnet. Let's choose 192.168.4.64 slash 27 for line 1 and we mark the second one 192.168.4.96 slash 27 unused at this point reserved for the future use. We have completed the second largest network line 1 and we move to the next step find the subnet for line 3 with 12 hosts. This step repeats the process above. Let's look at the second row in the sunny table. We are looking for the minimum number of hosts which can satisfy line 3 with 12 hosts. 16 is the number. We circle 16 and the whole column. Now we want to subnet the unused network 
192.168.4.96-27, and further divide it into two smaller subnets, with a new subnet mask slash 28 with 16 total host IDs. We choose 192.168.4.96 slash 28 for line 3, and we mark 192.168.4.112 slash 28 all used at this point and reserved for the future use. We have completed step 4 and we move to the last step. We want to assign three smaller subnets for serial links A, B, and C. Each link needs two host IDs. Step 5 is last step because once we get subnets for these three links, we are done. Let's look at the second row in the table. We are looking for the minimum number of hosts that can satisfy a network with only two hosts. We believe the number 4 is what we are looking for. We circle 4 and the whole column. We can see the new subnet mask is slash 30. We choose the unused subnet 192.168.4.112 slash 28 to further divide it into four smaller subnets. Why four smaller subnets? I leave this question to you. Now let's fill out these four new rows. We only focus on the fourth octet instead of reading the whole IP addresses. I believe you are already tired of my accent. The first one is dot one one two slash thirty. The second one is a dot one one six slash thirty. Third one is one twenty slash thirty. The fourth one one twenty four slash thirty. Each subnet has a four host IDs which are exactly what we need. The first ID is reserved for the network ID, the last one is reserved for broadcast ID, and the two usable IDs are assigned to two routers on each link. We can assign any three out of four subnets to links A, B, and C. For the sake of simplicity, we assigned the first three. The fourth one is marked on used. We have completed the last step and we are done with the question. In summary, VLSM subnetting is considered subnetting a subnet. Compared with FLSM subnetting, VLSM subnetting makes it more efficient of available IDs. The process includes several steps. Step 1, arrange the networks from the largest to the smallest. Step 2, pick the largest network to start with. Step 3, pick the next largest network to work with. We might have a step 4 and a step 5 depending on how many networks of different sizes we are required to work with. Last step, pick the last network to work with. From step 2 to the last step, the process is repeating. In the second row of the Sony subnetting table, we are looking for the minimum numbers of host IDs to satisfy the gaming network. Once we know the minimum number, the rest would be a piece of cake. I hope this video is helpful. Thank you very much and see you next time.